book a champion in his own right, being able to now rider coach Cody through uh, what could be a third consecutive championship season. Let's see if he can get it done. Yeah, he's got a sleeve of tear-offs ready to go in case he needs some. A couple of fast guys back down the second row. Travis Petten had a good performance last night, as did the 26 of Aiden Roos. Evans, Tyler Raggio with a sixth place finish last night was his career best. So there's some fast guys all the way through the field, including Shayna Texter Bauman starting in that 11th starting spot, number 52. Scotty, there goes the 10 second board. We are ready to go with our first heat race of the night. Underway. First to the corner, Cody Kopp, last night's winner on the bottom. Gautier coming fast from the outside and joining up the 66 of Logan Eisenhardt. These two went at it back and forth. They exchanged exchange the lead a couple times in the main event, and now we get to see him do battle in a heat race. Yeah, and it looks like Gautier's going to get the edge up on the high side. Chase Sadoff slides up from the inside on his Honda. And he goes down. Third, and then he goes down. We stay red. We stay, stay green until we see that red. Yeah, He's kind of stuck under one. that I think bike. They're going to get the red here, maybe. Moorhead's trying to pick it up, and uh, we're still green until we see a now red. There's now the there's red. the red. Okay. I had a feeling that would come out. Yeah, he's right there in the racing surface. So for caution's sake, they come back around in less than, you know, about 18 seconds, they'll be right back around there. So they threw the red flag. So I believe we're possibly going to have a complete restart because they only completed one lap. So Well, they didn't even complete the lap, right? Yeah, I, it was before the completion of that first lap, I think. It's right after the end of the first lap, possibly. Here they come. Yeah, this is turn number one back around. Watch the third bike. There he is. The back end just kind of steps out on him. So it may be a little bit slippery down there. They did add oh, yeah, some moisture right. to the racetrack. The, just after they got past. Here it is again. Slap. The third yeah. motorcycle is what we're looking at. Yeah, the back end just steps around on him. Everybody else behind him does an excellent job going around the down rider. He's kind of stuck underneath there. His back foot is actually under that rear wheel. He's trying to get it out. And here comes Steve Moorhead. And that's when the red flag came out. There's a look at the hot and the cold box over here. See Sean Raggio talking to Tyler Raggio on the Raggio Racing Sluggo Racing entry right there. Scotty, how much of that is because the track has just been prepped again? Is it a little bit more slick than the last time they were out there? I believe so. I believe they added some moisture. Also, the sun has gone down, so the moisture is still sitting there. It's not been soaked up by the sun, so it's maybe a little bit slippery down there on the inside, and it's it's a lot different than it was, you know, an hour and 15 minutes ago when they were last out. Yeah definitely cooler as well which makes right the bikes are coming faster. back to life now we'll have to keep our eyes on the 88 we saw we saw a few riders last night start the back work their way to the front we'll see if the 88 can all right let's go to Kristen some of these riders told me that last night these red flags became an issue not because of the restarts but because they had to manage the clutch now when you're getting off the start they were telling me they're really having to sort of feather the throttle because they're conscious of that clutch getting too hot Scotty as a rider where do you want to ensure that you're managing the clutch you want to keep it in neutral as long as you can Chris and keep it in there until you see that 10 second board go up or until it turns sideways even you'll keep it in neutral as long as you can because you don't want to have clutch issues because that will slow you down everything you can to not heat that clutch up you see that open spot on the inside of row number one Ralph here we go that would have been set off he's at the very tail of the field now on the inside row watching the lights as is everybody else focused here we go, we're racing. Cop, clear this time, down into one on the bottom, and Gautier again looking at the outside on that 79. Here he comes charging around the outside, and Eisenhardt right there in third on that 66. Cop hangs on to the bottom, and he's gonna hang on to that number one spot for now. Also in the mix of 26 of Aiden Rusevitz. Gautier to the inside, new leader as we're back into one. He is hungry, Ralph. He goes in a little bit too deep, and that opens up the door for the one. He comes right back through. Gautier looking on the bottom again. He likes that line. He'll take the lead again for now. They cross over. Here comes Cody Kopp back up the inside. Back to the front. He goes just before the line. Then Ruth, Then it's going to be Gautier again on the outside of them. Back to Kopp. That last lap, Ralph, 18.282. The track is faster than the last few times they were on the track. Great short track racing right now. See oh, red the flag. run is out again. Bike down in turn two. There it is. KTM this time. There's the 52 Shane of Texas Brown and the 55 of Raggio bringing out the red. So first it was the 88 in the first one and now the 52 and the 55. So Chase Sadoff got all the way up to sixth. 
no during that run when we got back to green. They'll go back to the prior lap across the finish line. So he may be starting a little further back, but he's on an excellent charge right now. And we saw that a couple times last night, Ralph, in the heat race. We saw Breyer do it. We saw a few other riders who were involved in incidents had to start the back, and you have nothing to lose. So you go for it. You go up high. And like I mentioned, the track is getting faster. There's more moisture in the track right now as the sun has set. Yeah, that outside lane really came in last night, gave those guys some opportunities to make up a lot of lost ground. So they go to the hot and the cold box and they're not allowed to work on the motorcycles. Looks like several of them are cleaning off their lenses, maybe putting on some new uh, tear offs so they can see what's going on. And you got to keep them, as many of them on there as you can until until the very last second and make There's sure you Robbie can see. Robbie Bobby talking to his rider, Dalton Godier. Derek Hirsch right there on the left side, helping out. Robbie's waving, there's Derek. Derek raced some of the world championship ice races this season with us. There's Robbie Bobby. He's always fo there. He is. Yeah, photo bombing. You can't miss Shannon him. Shannon Texter Bauman ready to go. Jake Johnson, her mechanic, rider, coach, talking Max things Will. over. Max checking on her. Look, at, looks like he's looking at her lens right there. You see, just you can see how much how wet yeah, it is because it it's sticking to their boots. Yeah. And she just went down on that left side, so it's definitely clotting up. You know, when you get stuck on your pants or on your boots and. Looks a little discouraged right now, so she'll have to make her way from the back of the pack towards the front, and I'd be a little upset as well. So she was running about ninth or 10th when she went down. There's Jake Johnson taking a look at the left side. You can see they're cleaning the dirt out of the rims, and I think that's a good move too, because that just packs in there, and if it's not in there perfect, it's gonna be a little off-centered. You don't necessarily feel it on a short track like this, but it's lighter weight if you get rid of that stuff. You know, it's interesting you bring that up. We'll take a look later as we see Cody Cop here. Uh, we'll see the new Honda come out with Dan Bromley on it. Those wheels are handcrafted on Bromley's bike, and they actually shape the rim, not squared at the bottom, but rounded. So there's no lip. So that so there's no lip, so that that dirt wow. slides right off and doesn't pack up like that. That is awesome. That's thinking ahead. Cody Cop's ready to go. He doesn't like these red flags. He's been getting good starts. It's been good racing so far between the one and the 79, battling for that top position. Here sure they come. Has. Got a few laps left to go here. Bringing him up. Looks like uh, looks like they're putting Dalton Gauthier at the top spot. So we're gonna have our first staggered restart. They started doing the staggered restart, you know, probably about 10 or 15 years ago. And that that's because if that bike in front of you doesn't get going, you don't run right into the back of them. So they they walk it off. They put the hash marks down on the ground. Yeah, and it looks like Chase is going to be in sixth. That sure is. All right, that's good. He's, he's on the move. Now he's up. To, actually, he's got a good starting spot, too, because he's up there on the racing line. Yep. Right now, it's not as important as later on, but uh, he's in a good position. 26, Rue 7, scooting on over. He's had a good run so far, coming from the seventh, sixth starting position. Travis Petten right behind him. Everybody angling themselves into the corner the way they want to be. There's TJ Welty pulling up there, one of our new pro riders, 175. They wanted to give a shout out to Chuck Payne. They stayed with them when they when they made their trip down to Florida from all of Castle Rock, Washington. That's the first place they went to, to to rest up a little bit. Shane is all the way at the back. See what she can do. Here we go. Visors back there are as well. down. Everybody's clicked into gear, keeping an eye on those lights. Ooh. A little bit of smoke. Some of the bikes are heating up. Good start for Gautier and Cop. They come right after each other. Bruce Evans dives to the bottom on the 26. That big blue Yamaha. Gautier on the outside. Cop on the bottom. Here they come down into the corner. Cop getting some good ground on the bottom. Slides up wide, but Gautier is already out front. The track is much smoother than it was during practice and qualifying as well, Ralph. That makes for some better racing. Boy, look at Cobb had his feet up basically the whole way through that last set of corners and got a great drive off the turn. 79 goes into three, a little bit wide, squares up the corner, comes back on the inside. Cobb looks over. He didn't think he was going to be there, and here comes Gautier back to the top spot. Dalton Gautier said last night after his heat race, I've got something for these guys tonight. I'm ready to go. He might have been just one night short in his prediction. He might be even better tonight than he was last night, Scotty. What a race we got going on for this top spot. I mean, it, it means you put yourself in the LM Dallas Honda Challenge, but you want to be the fast time to have the first pick in that main event. Top two will go to the challenge. Top six will go straight to the main. Dalton's not giving up on that high line in turn number three. This time he stays in the high line all the way around. He wasn't able to square up the corner. He's still up in the high line in the deep stuff, Ralph. He sure is. Now he cuts down to the bottom, squares it off. 
Cody looks back to say, where is he? He's right here alongside you and by you now, Cody. Yeah, Cop Into the lead goes Dalton Godier. Cop made a little bitty bobble over there in turn two, and that cost him the lead for right now. Here's the white flag. And he's running out of time to make it back. Dalton Gautier looking to get the win here in his first heat race of the night. Battle back here. Here comes the 66 of Logan Eisenhart with Sadoff getting passed for third. Dalton Gautier off the corner of the checkered flag is going to go to Gautier. And Sadoff is going to take third just behind Cody Cobb, last night's main event winner. So Gautier, Cobb, Sadoff, Eisenhart, Roos Evans, and Petten all going through to the main. And Tyler Raggio from the back of the pack worked his way all the way up to seventh, one spot short of making that main event. So he'll have to come back in that last chance qualifier. That was a great race. Good way to kick off the night. Great way to start. Kristen Dalton Gautier said last night, I've got something for these guys. He might have been one night too early. He might have it even better and stronger here tonight. And today he told me he has something to prove here. And you looked hungry out there. At one point in that race, the front tire actually lifted up, losing a little bit of traction. But you pulled it off, Dalton. Yeah, that was a crazy battle. And uh, hope you fans liked it. Let me hear you. Come on, Daytona. Cheer up, baby. That was sick. Um, yeah, it felt really good. Uh, Cody's going to be tough to beat, but uh, I feel like our bike's even better today, and uh, I'm, I'm hungry, and uh, I want to win. I love it. Congratulations, Dalton. We will see you in Al Lamb's Dallas Honda Challenge. He's pumped up, Ralph. Yeah, and that squad needs a little bit of cash to keep their program moving forward, so if you can get the 2500 bucks out of the challenge, that'd be great, right? Yep, he sure did. Cody knew he was there the entire race. They went back and forth, but it was Dalton running that high line, and he prevailed to take the win. Uh, up next, heat race number two, parts and limit of Tom Drain from Australia. He went down on the last lap, last corner, wasn't too happy about it. The 48 of Trent Lowe will start second. 91, Justin Jones from New York will start third. And James Ott on the first impressions, Husqvarna, he will start fourth. The Jet, Jared Lowe, will be the first pick on the inside of row number two on the 63. 75, Taryn Santero from California. 49, Chad Coast, also from California. And the 265, one of the highly anticipated rookies coming in is the 265, Evan Renshaw from Kinsers, Pennsylvania. Row three, the veteran, 94, Ryan Wells. 40, Olin Kistler. 43, Jacob Van Decoy. 221, Daniel Poole. And all the way in row number four, the 121, Jacob Cassio from Queen Creek, Arizona now. And the 87 of Landon Smith from Florida has a long way to go. Six to the main event, heat race number two. Our monster girl puts up the 10 second board. She will turn it sideways and exit the racetrack. They will know they then have three to five seconds before that light goes green and we go heading off into turn number one. Train with a good start of the 59 and it heads straight down into turn number one and the Yamaha is out front and leading. Here comes Trent on the bottom of the 48. Trent Lowe coming strong in the Honda. He's got a lot of company with him as they all come storming through one and two, and three and four, and back at the flag stand they go, Scotty. He's bringing his teammate along with him, but he just gets you know taken over by the 19 of James Odds on the move. Now Renshaw back on the inside. We got a great battle for third, fourth, and fifth. They're all trying to keep up with the 59. Renshaw all in red on the 265. On the inside, there you see Lowe in the red 48, and it's Odd in the 19. Renshaw way down on the bottom right alongside of him and out front on that instance in Yamaha's Tom Drain. And here comes Renshaw, gets by Ott for the third spot up the inside. So he's making that inside line work and now Ott's trying to repay the favor and does so down here in three and four. And Jones on the 91 is right there, top five riders. Six going through. So that's Drain low, Ott, Renshaw, Jones and Terrence Santero right now on the 75. Top Look. two of course go through to the challenge. So that's going to be Drain and low as Renshaw slides wee wide in the corner. Just after he picked up a spot or two, he's going to hand it right back to Ott. Another one of the veterans on the circuit in the singles class of the 91 of Justin Jones. He's from New York. He's not going to run the entire season with us, but he loves the Daytona flat track. Renshaw back on the bottom gets around Jones. Now he's trying to find a way around Ott if he can do it. I know they'd love to catch up and try to get that second spot away to make that challenge race, but they're battling amongst themselves. It's kind of maybe Whoa. slowing them down a little Jones bit. Jones went deep into the corner and almost into, almost into the backside of Renshaw. Ott doing everything he can to hold on to third right now. That'll get him into the main, but he'd love to get around low on that 48. 
get himself into the challenge race and a possible shot at 2,500 bucks. 18.455, the fastest lap for Tom Drain. Putting down some quick laps and pulling away. The 48 right there in second, Trent Lowe, and Otts looking for a way in. White flag is out, one more lap to go. Jones on the 91 has got by Renshaw. There's the leader. Drain, who won a couple of big races down under in Australia over the winter, came into racing here in the States at Bike Week on a lot of momentum, keeps the momentum going with a win in heat number two here on the second night at Daytona. So your top six will be Drain, Low, Ott, Jones, Renshaw, and Santero all going to the main. Drain and Low will also get the extra four laps in the challenge. Good run right there. I think he's on a mission. He ended up on the ground last night, should have been on the podium. He was in the third position. A little contact with the, some riders right there in turn number three. It looked like is what we've been told. We didn't see it from our point of view. We don't have any camera footage of it, but. You know, that's short track racing. So watch Tom Drain on this replay here. He's going to, you're always trying to shorten up the racetrack the best way that you can, right? You definitely are. So he goes in high. This is going into turn three. Gets it sideways. And he, he laid it in the corner. You know, you try to throw it in the corner and get in there as deep as you can. You slide it in the corner route to really slow it down. Yeah. Switching classes, this is the Mission Super Twins. They're heat race number one. They're two heat races on the pole. Be the three of Brian Rapp, Bauman, Salinas, California, the Rick Ware Racing KTM. 44, he loves this place. Brandon Robinson, he has three wins at this, at Daytona Flat Track. He's from Oxford, Pennsylvania. 67, Davis Fisher, Warren, Oregon on an Indian. And 21, that's Blackjack, Trevor Bruner in his rookie season on the front row of this heat race. 18, Maxwell, this is his rookie season in the Super Twins as well. 92, Brandon Price finished second last night. He's on row number two. And the champ, Jared Meese back there, also starting on that second row with Kobe Carlisle, the 36th from Canandaigua, New York. And at the back of the pack is the freight train, 166, Logan McGrain. The mower, Mitch Harvitt on the 22 from Pennsylvania, both those two. And Kevin Stallings from Indianapolis, Indiana on the Weirbach Racing, Barry Brothers Kawasaki. So three Kawasaki's on that third row. And just like in the singles class, the top six will go directly to the main event. Maxwell and Bruner both moving up to this class as well as McGrain back there on that back row. So it's a big step from the AFT singles class up here to the Mission Super Twins. All right, here we go. 10 second board is up. And now away. And everybody's focused on the lights and ready to go towards turn number one. Bauman on the three. Can he get to the corner first? Robinson right alongside, always runs well here at Daytona. But coming from the outside is Bruner on the 21. Robinson has the lead. Bruner fighting hard to keep the 21 going straight. Bauman slides up into second place with Fisher right behind him. The 92 from row number two is looking for second place. Here he comes up the inside. And Jared Mees on the number one comes right up alongside him and the fight is on for second with three riders. Give it to Price for now on the 92 in the black and yellow as a couple of former champions in the one of Mies and the three of Bauman are right there hunting with him to try to get into the challenge race, the Mission Foods Too Fast, Too Tasty Challenge coming up later for $5,000. I don't know what's going on with the three, but he was the fast qualifier. Now he's sitting back there in the fourth position, so maybe the different racetrack, and he's not keeping up with it. Well, meanwhile, while they're all fighting, trying to get some handling going, Robinson is checking out on the 44, but watch Bruner on the 21 here. He's up in the deep stuff, and right about here, the thing tries stepping out on him. He has to check up, and he's got a handful right there. He does a good job keeping it pointing the right direction and stays up there in about the fourth position. And Colby Carlisle got a mouthful of Daytona dirt, didn't he? The moon dirt. Right in the spray. Look at Jared Meese working the one, the reigning champ, the nine-time champ on the Indian. Coming from third, trying to get second. Trying to get in that challenge race. 44 pulling away. We're watching second, third, and fourth right here. The 92 got second in the main from the second row. He's worked his way up to second in this one. Meese, this is not one of his strong suits at this particular track, but he's trying to go directly to the main event and get as good a starting spot as he can. Right now he's in a spot. He'll get him into that main. 
He wants into that 5,000 to win Too Fast Too Tasty Challenge, Scotty. He knows he needs one more spot to qualify. Fisher just went in way too deep on that 67. Had to leave it out in the deep stuff. Now he's out in the roost again. Back there, he's got his hands full of the 21 as we're watching the three and the one going at it and for Mies that third spot. And is not going to get there. The white flag is out. He's got a long ways to go here in one short lap as Robinson and Price come off the corner and head down the back straightaway. Brandon Robinson, who lives here in the Daytona Beach area, has won here at the Daytona races, loves racing here in Daytona. He's gonna pick up another heat race victory here tonight. Excellent ride by the 44. Price will end up second. Yeah, he loves this place. A lot of riders, you know, struggle here, but not the 44. Meese will end up third, Ralph. So Robinson, Price, Meese, Bauman, Fisher, and Bruner all going through to the main. Robinson and Price will get four extra laps in the Too Fast, Too Tasty Challenge. Maxwell missing it by one spot. Colby Carlisle missing it by two as that was the end of heat race number one. The fastest lap out there was Robinson, a 1-8.551. So it's, it's going through some more changes. I'm talking about the track. It will do so all throughout the night. And the rider and the teams that can keep up with those changes rise to the top at the end of the night. Chris, it sure looks like Brandon Robinson has some momentum rolling tonight. On his crew chief, Ben Evans, 41st birthday, uh, Brandon, what is it about this track? You're so confident here and so dominant. I honestly can't tell you. I just uh, I just love the surface. I love the inconsistency. I love that it's slippery, technical, but you can just get it on at the same time. Uh, my crew chief, Ben Evans, suspension guru, Kel Kalkman, slow in the piss. They got me dialed in right now. This is the best the bike's been all weekend. And um, can't wait for the, the two mission, two face, two JS, two tasty dash and uh, the main event. And guys, this is going to be a wild night. If Brandon Robinson can start mixing it up with Dallas Daniels, we may have a, what is it you say, Scotty, a fist fight in the phone booth? Absolutely. That's what short track racing is all about, especially here at Daytona as we take a look back. Here's a look at how this one got underway. Robinson with a great start. And Bruner on the outside. And Bruner just had a wild horse to try to control there on the 21. And while he was fighting for traction, Robinson was checking out. Heat race number two pulling up to the line. The three-time, three-in-a-row winner is the 32 Dallas Daniels. He'll be on the pole starting second from Graham Washington on the Harley-Davidson XR750, the 69 slamming Sammy Halbert. The 20 bike, Jared Vandekoy, Edison, Ohio, and his Indian will start third. And the outside of the front row on the Royal Infield from Coastville, Pennsylvania, a former winner here as well, is the 10 of Johnny Lewis. Row two, 25, Ben Lau. 62, Dan Bromley on that Honda Translap. The 34, Cameron Smith on a KTM 107, Wyatt Vaughn on a Kawasaki. Row 3, Declan Bender from Illinois. The 47, Michael Hill from Oregon. And the 37, Bronson Bauman from Salinas, California. Top six of the main event here is Ralph with the call. All right, here we go. 10-second board is up. Johnny Lewis on the outside on the 10 and all white. Jared Vanderkoy in the 20. Sammy Halbert on that XR 750 Harley in the 69. And Dallas Daniels, last night's winner on the 32 Yamaha. Here we go. Focus on the lights. Green, and we're racing. Oh, Vandercoy almost slips into Halbert. Halbert trying to break away on the Harley, but it's going to be the Yamaha out front. Here comes Dallas Daniels. And here comes the 20 of Vandercoy. Got a good drive and moves into second. He's bringing with him Cameron Smith. Cameron Smith having a great run on the 34. And Halbert now back up the inside to take over third as Lewis and Smith battle on the bottom for fourth. Look at this battle. It's going on for second, third, and fourth. And here comes the 62 of Dan Bromley. Dan the man on the move on that 62 Honda. The new Honda making its way up a top Ooh. 10 finish last night as a Halbert gets back contact, into banging maybe. with Vandercoy on the 20. And Johnny Lewis is in the 10, all in white. Oh, he comes right man. up into Vandercoy. And He's... then he has to get out of it. And Smith is going to get by, and so is the Honda Bromley. I just saw a bunch of tear-offs coming off of turn number two. I don't know if they're losing them or if they're taking them off all no, at purpose, but it's getting off, crazy. They're ripping them off, I think, because of the dirt on the racetrack. As everybody's getting roosted out there tonight, big time. Bromley sits now up into fourth, having a great run on the Honda. Man, what a battle we got going on. Everybody wants to move to the front. There, here comes the 25. That's Ben Lau. He's trying to get up in the mix. Top six will go through, and he's in a position right now. Is Ben on that 25. Vanderkoy's got to get going. 
He's one spot out of it. Oh. Lewis gets oh, loose. He, he gets into Lau and down goes Ben. He hit a bump and they went up the racetrack and their handlebars touched and Ben Lau's trying to get over there. You can see that rear wheel still spinning around and there's Steve Moorhead already out there on the racetrack. That means the red flag is, is out if he's out there on the track. Well, Dallas, yet. Dallas hasn't slowed down. No, it's still going. I would have thought. Now the red's out. Yeah, okay. Wow. Slight contact, but when you're crossed up like that and all the way John, over like yeah, that, and Johnny hit much. Johnny hit that little bump and it pushed him up the racetrack. That was yep. definitely not on purpose. But Ben Lau doesn't seem like he's too happy about it. But uh, he'll, hopefully he'll be all right and be able to restart. He switched on over to the KTM's doing it for Rackley Racing and. You mentioned the white motorcycles. Johnny Lewis, well, Rackley Racing has gone all white, too, with his bike, the 25 yep. KTMs, and Davis Fisher 67 bikes all yep. white out here to be seen. And just a different look. It has been aggressive. A lot of leaning on each other and pushing and shoving out there. Let's watch this. Watch Lewis here. It's on the right side of the screen. Here comes Lewis, and he hits that same bump and goes up the racetrack, and this time gets right into the 20 of Vandekoy. That was about the Look second or third lap. Too, yeah, Scotty. you want to be out of that stuff if you can. And, and then Ben Lau here on the 25. So Lau went in, took the spot away. Johnny comes right back on the inside, and right about there's a bump, and it upsets the suspension. and Just, just hit his bar foot. Just barely touched, you know I mean? And that's sometimes all it takes when you're cranked over like that. Just hit his left foot a little bit, and down he went. Yeah, the track looks amazing tonight. A, a few bumps, nothing like last night. And Not you know, yet. As they prepped the track, as we went on last night, the track got faster and faster. Sammy Halbert up there running second behind Dallas Daniels, and we didn't talk about Sammy much, but uh, he was very fast last night. The bike was leaking oil. Do you want to talk about it right yes, now? Yes, of course. Why not? So the little bit out of the primary case. Correct. It was leaking a little bit of oil. The black flag was displayed. We kept going. He was in a big group of riders. So he kept going. And if you don't know if it, the black flag is for you, you keep going. And that's what Sammy did. He still ended up with that fifth position. So originally was disqualified. Then they decided that they didn't show the board with the number on it. Which if you read the rule book, you have to put the rider's number on a board and show him the board. I discussed it with Sammy earlier today, and he said, I was truly confused because we were in a bit of a pack there, and I saw the flag, but I didn't know if it was for me or somebody else, and he didn't see the board, so he didn't know. And by the time then they pulled the black flag, so there was a bit of confusion with that. And as the American Flat Track officials told us in our meeting earlier today, they knew that they hadn't actually performed the black flag process the way it states in the rule book. Yes, they displayed the flag. They felt like they pointed at Sammy, but by not putting it on the board, had there been an appeal, it wouldn't have stood because you have to do it by the letter of the rule. And as Sammy stated, it, you know, he was in a big group of riders. If he would have pulled off, it could have you could have started a, a pile up. You know, it was just it was just a lot going on. That's what happens on a short track. They're firing up the bikes. They're going to do it one more time. This will give uh, looks like a staggered restart once again. The track is definitely slowing down a little bit. Ralph, the fastest time for Dallas is a one eight point seven three zero, and it was a little but bit faster Scotty, in the first heat race. Is it that the track is slowing down, or that the racing has gotten so physical here tonight that? Everybody's leaning and pushing on each other and clumped up together that you can't really get out there and turn the fast lap. Probably a little bit of both, but with Dallas Daniels out front, this will be a good tail right here. If he gets the, if he gets the whole shot and sneaks away, we'll see his lap times. If they get faster, then then you're right. It's been because they've been mixing it up. But if it slows down a little bit, again, you know, they put mo as much moisture as they can to not make it too slippery for our riders. You know, they only have a, an inch or two of, you know, tire on the tread on the racetrack at a time. So. And we'll see. It is slowing down a little bit. It'll pick back up a little bit later on. Last night, it took rubber at the end of the night. So it goes through changes throughout the day and throughout the evening. We'll see if Ben Lau can make his way back towards oh, the front. Sammy asking a question there. See if the he, 69. He, he possibly can't see the starting light because Dallas is a little bit taller than he is. He's getting scooted on over. And Ben Lau is asking for just a second, trying to get that bike started back there at the back of the pack. He's Mayor's still pushing buttons. I'm not sure Ben's ready to go. No, there, there he goes. goes. Whew, that was close. That was right down to the last tick, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Too close for me. Underway. 
Comes Daniels Tan. first to the corner. Halbert comes right after him. Great move by Lewis up the inside on the 10. He gains a couple of spots all in white. But it's going to be Daniels and Halbert. And the Harley charges up the inside. The XR 750 leads him here at Daytona. Wow. Still got some legs in it, Scotty. It sure does. Here comes Cameron Smith putting on a move on Johnny Lewis for that fourth position. But he goes way wide. He do not gain much ground. But here's the Honda now. Here comes Dan Bromley up to fifth on the number 62. Look at all these different brands. Harley, Yamaha, Royal Enfield, KTM, and Indian. Five brands in the top five spots. It's exciting. It sure is. Got to love the parity with all the brands here. It's look the progressive American flat track. It's looking a little bit slippery. They're really kind of, the bikes are stepping out on them. So it's it, it's a little bit slippery. Again, the track's going through that transition right now. It's still wet. There's some traction. It'll continue to change throughout the night as the white flag's already out. Well, the power's getting to the ground on the big Harley because Sammy Halbert's doing a great job. He's almost got a full half a second on Dallas Daniels last time across the line as they are working this final lap here. Coming to the checkered flag, there it is. Sammy Halbert with a big win in heat number two with the Progressive American Flat Track Mission Super Twins. Dallas Daniels, last night's winner finishes up second. Johnny Lewis is third. Cam Smith up there, a good run on that 34 for fourth. Dan Bromley will get that fifth spot, and Jared Vandekoy gets the final transfer spot. Ben Lau from the back of the pack gets all the way up to seventh, just missing it by one position. And the Harley and the Yamaha go to the Too Fast, Too Tasty Challenge. And the Honda, the KTM, the Royal Enfield. Look at all the different brands, the top six, di six different brands. Kristen, the Harley's going to the challenge. <laughs> and Sammy Halbert could not be more happier about that. Just a heartbreaking episode at round one, but looking for a little redemption here tonight, right, Sammy? Yeah, I mean, not trying to think about last night, just out here doing my thing and uh, just, uh, just kind of stay in the zone, like I said, trust my reaction times. But I wanted to get the night start out, started off with a bang and to get the Harley fans riled up. Back on a carbureted bike on the yeah. XR750. No, no, a beautiful bike there, Sammy. All right, here's a look at it again and watch Halbert here on the inside making the move on Daniels. Boy, Sammy wrote it down in there so deep. Scotty, look how lipped over he was. He really had to throw it in the corner to slow it down and keep from hitting the 32, and that was it. He was long gone from there. Up next, the Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program. This is their heat race, so get them qualified into their main event. On the pole, it's the 11. Last night's winner, that is Taya Little from Welland, Ontario, Canada. Starting second is the 17, Kinsey Luker from California. 67 will start third, Shasta LaRue from Bennett, Colorado. Starting fourth is the 28 of Maya Maffei, and she is from Fortuna, Oregon. The two is Mc... Michaela Nichols, and she is from Longmont, Colorado. 35, Hannah Lang from Campbellsport, Wisconsin. 22, Hannah Robertson, and she's from Sterling, Virginia. And the eight, Christiana Ross, and she is from Son Sonora, California. This is the one and only heat race for the Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program on National Women Ride Day. Is that what it is? Uh, National Women's Day. Okay. I believe just in women in general. I thought, it, was, I, I thought it had something to do with racing, but this, no, I, this is all ladies out here yeah. on the track. And the one one lady we have from Sonora, she's from the gold country. Gold really? Gold country of California. Like yeah. where the 49ers are from? Well, the original 49ers, yes. <laughs> I got you. Here we go. Heat race for the Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program. They're getting their bikes in gear. Beautiful part of the state, by the way. Here we go. Heat race time. Build train race. Long light, great start for the 17. That is Luker out in front. Luker with the whole shot, taking him down the back straightaway. Here comes the battle for second. The 67 taking over that Shasta LaRue. Kenzie Luker out front on that 17 leading. Good battle for second here, bar to bar. Shasta LaRue on the inside of the 67. She's going to grab the spot for now, but then charging up on the outside, Taya Little. Taya's last night's winner. Like you said earlier today, she was consistent early out in the day. In the main event, she just turned things around. We'll see if that happens again tonight. She's working her program here tonight exactly like she did last night. Right there, always near the front, very competitive all throughout the day, and then saved a little bit extra for the main event to come. Sure enough. 
Kinsey Luker continues to lead, stretching out the lead. Shasta LaRue's having a good run here tonight. She's from Colorado. She was trying to get in the zone when I went down there earlier, talking to her husband. And then Maya back there in fourth on the 28. Yeah, Maya Maffei. I love those colors on the 28. Oh, Shasta goes a little too wide, and here comes Tay up the inside to take over second place. And, and that's the hardest part, Ralph. They're learning this racetrack. It's hard to find your breaking point. These big, heavier motorcycles tend to drift up the racetrack just a little bit, so it's it's hard to know when to shut off that throttle and when to lean it into that corner. Hey, we're seeing seasoned pros make mistakes here tonight. That's short track racing, right? At its best. And a battle brewing for third now as Maya closes in on Shasta. Here comes the 28. Look oh, up she's the right up the inside there. Maya just had to lift a little bit, slot back into fourth, build that battle back up again. Laps are winding down in this qualifying heat race. They have a 10 lap main event coming up in just a little bit. Here comes the 11, slowly closing in the on the 17. Going back to the battle for third, the 67 of LaRue and the 28 of Maffei. Oh, and again, Maya comes charging down into turn and closed up on Shasta and then has to get out of the gas again. She's got to find her timing with that a little bit better, Scotty. Yeah, she's going to, she'll get it figured out. There's the white flag. One to go. Yep. See if she can get it figured out here on the final lap. She might have another run at it. Here comes Taya. Working Taya. inside of Ross. Sorry, Taya. Kenzie Luker, she's out, been out there on cruise control, but the 11 is closing in. Kenzie, her last couple of corners. Here she comes, checkered flag awaiting, and she'll win it here in our Royal Enfield build, train, race, heat race. Second is the 11 of Taya Little. Shasta LaRue, 67, is third to 28. We'll get fourth. That is Maya Metfay. Hannah Lang is fifth. Michaela Nichols, Hannah Robertson, and Christiana Ross. All right, while we finish up with our build train race heat race, we're going to take a quick break to step away here, and we'll be right back with more racing action from the Royal Enfield Daytona Short Track night number two at Bike Week 2024. I spoke Motion Marco. Pro. 